Let's do something a little different on this channel. Let's load test some batteries. Throughout the electric turbo journey, I ended up accumulating a whole lot of really good and unique test equipment to do some high power testing of lithium batteries. Somebody pointed that out in the comments and suggested I should do some battery tests and reviews. So I figured we'd start small. Hopefully if you guys like this sort of thing, we can do more. You can suggest what batteries you'd want to see tested. But typically in order to do the most fun test for me, which is the load test, we want to see if these batteries can actually live up to their, their rating specifically like can this thing really put out 100C? 100C would be 155 amps. <laughs> We're going to find out, and we have ways to do that. We're also going to measure the internal resistance of the batteries, as well as the weight, the size, you know, how they come delivered, all kinds of stuff. This is going to be a very, very thorough test. So these are our three contestants. We have this Ovonic FPV 100C 1550 milliamp hour 4S pack. We have this Z pack, which is... 120C, 1500 milliamp hours. And then we have this one, which is actually, uh, I was actually expecting uh, not just a black box in this bag, but this is actually a CNHL Black Series, 1500 milliamp hour. I'm not sure what the C rating is, but we'll find out shortly. So let's open these up. Let's see how they showed up, how they shipped and weigh them and all kinds of stuff. Of course I say that and Oh, well, it helps if I open the box correctly. All right, so this is the CNHL battery. Now, I paid for all of these. There are no freebies, so you're getting my unbiased opinion. All right, so this guy is 100C 4S 1500 milliamp hours. These are all approximately the same sort of class of battery. All right, let's try this one. This is a Z, I have some experience with their batteries. But again, I paid for these. It's actually a two pack because it's the only way to buy them. We'll save the other one for later. And this is the Ovonic. All three of these are available on Amazon. That's where I got them from. I'll put links in the description below if you want to buy one. If you want to buy the winner, maybe you're an underdog, you want to buy the loser. I don't, I don't know, but it's going to be down there below. So feel free to use those links. It helps the channel. I'm not going to lie. All right, so here we go. Well, clearly you can tell the Z battery is, in fact, physically the smallest. Let me grab a caliper. We're going to measure these in millimeters. This one is about 70. So we got 70 by 35-ish by 34. 70 by 35 by 34. This one is about 77 and a half by 34 by, let's call it 40-ish. This one is about 74 by 37 and a half by 35.4 all right so there is your sizes if you want to know if it's going to fit in your unit whatever your unit may be so let's weigh them weight tends to have an impact on performance so the what is it china hobby line i guess that's what cnhl stands for weighs 186.2 grams the Z, which is the smallest battery, weighs 168.3. And the Ovonic weighs 187.6. So these two are within a gram of each other. This one's the lightest weight. Now they all have roughly the same C rating. And they all have roughly the same amp hour rating. With it, this one brags about 50 more milliamp hours. We'll see. And which one is also rated at, oh, one of these. This one's rated at 120C. We'll see about the C. So once again, heaviest, basically the same, lightest. Moving on. All right, next question is, how are these shipped at what voltage level? 
So this guy came in at 15.4. <laughs> I didn't do this ahead of time. So they say 3.7, 3.8 volts is optimal for storage. So what was this one? This guy was 15.4 divided by 4. 3.85. So it's showing up just a little bit high. But, you know, eh, well, 3.85. <laughs> it shows us all of them anyway. That was kind of dumb to do the math when I didn't have to. So this one, 15.2, 3 3.8, 3.77, 3 3.8, 3.8. So not bad. This one, the Z, Fifteen point three, three point eight two, three point eight, three point eight one, three point eight two. Okay. All right. So you know, for storage, you know, people get really, really kind of anal about like storage voltage and stuff. Honestly, it doesn't really make that big of a difference as long as you're in the ballpark. It's it's usually fine. The stuff you do to your batteries will have a much bigger effect on their lifespan, like how heavily you discharge them, if you always charge them to 100%, that sort of thing. So the next thing, since we're sitting here, might as well do some internal resistance checks. Let me go get the meter. The meter is actually over by the 12S pack of Doom, which is really a 20S pack, which can provide several thousand amps. And I dropped a bus bar into it last night and vaporized part of it. Anyway, I have found that this meter is actually quite accurate and it doesn't change much in terms of whether the battery is fully charged or not. I mean, there may be a little shift, but not much of one. Gotta make sure you get the best possible connection. All right, 9.8. Let's call this 9.8 milliohms. And just for comparison's sake, to give you an idea, 9.8 milliohms, and this is rated at 100 C, so that'd be 150 amp draw. 9.8 milliohms, if we do the voltage drop calculation, at 150 amps, so 150 times 0 0.0098, that's ohms, so 1.47 volt drop that we would see. So it's possible. This may do it. This may actually be a 100C battery. All right, Z is up next. 12.1. So, and ironically, this is a 120C battery. So, that's not looking too good for the Z. Let's try the Ovonic. Whenever I see that, I think of ovary. I don't know why. All right, so let's see what we get here. This one's being a little finicky. They all have XT60 connectors, by the way. That's eh, about 9.42. So, Ovonic seems to be taking a lead. So, there are two more tests left, two more significant tests. One is the high load test, see how they perform. And the other one is the capacity test. I'm going to charge these up so we can do the high load test. That's the one I like. That's the fun test. Meet my 7,000 amp load tester. Well, actually, I've taken some of the graphite discs out of it simply because we're only measuring 150 amps. I've only got a 500 amp shunt in it with a 500 amp meter right now. That's the smallest one I've actually got. Again, we're only testing 150 amps. And the way these meters over here are configured, one is going to take voltage right off the balance lead, which actually takes a measurement right inside the battery itself. And this one will take voltage right on the other side of this XT60 connector. Incidentally, the gigantic box you see back here is the 12S battery pack of Doom. Well, it's really a 20S pack, but it's a whole nother story. We're gonna use that to test the Hobby Wing Castle P2 supercharger set up to its maximum capacity. I think we're gonna test for five seconds at 150 amps. Sound reasonable? Now, theoretically, you don't wanna take any one of these cells under three volts. So three times four is 12 volts. If we see 12 volts on that meter, you're in the realm of damaging the cells. I guess there's no time like the present, right? Let's hit it. 
There's 150, two, three, four, five. Well, I do declare the CNHL pack passes the test. I would legitimately call this a 100C pack. All right, Z. This one tested the highest internal resistance. By the way, all of these were fully charged up and they've been sitting for about two, three hours. So this is a resting voltage after a full charge. 16.77 volts is our star voltage. Is this gonna do it? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. It did better than I expected it to. It got down to 11 and a half volts. But still, it fails the 100C. Now this is a 120C pack. So theoretically, that means it's 180 amps is what this thing should hold. Yeah, I, if, if it was down below 12 volts on 100C, it's not going to hold 180 amps. There's just no way. I mean, we can throw it up there for a couple seconds. The pack's already warm. That's 180 amps. I mean, I'm impressed. Don't get me wrong. Something this size putting out that much current is kind of nuts. But Z, I don't think you actually passed the test. I'm sorry. Oh, and these cables are quite hot. Now the Ovonic pack. This one tested the best in terms of internal resistance, which means this one should perform the best in the load test. 16.81 in the pack, 16.72 on the other side of the connectors. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. And it did, it performed the best. It didn't get down to 12 volts until the very end. It was very, very close in performance to this pack though. So these two are pretty comparable. I think you'd see the same performance out of both of them. Now, of course, Unfortunately, the Z performed the worst, but the Z is also the smallest pack. Let's hit it one more time. Let's see if this will do 300 just for a second. Yep. <laughs> no problems with hitting 300 out of this little guy too. And incidentally, I'm just noticing this now, but the Z pack has by far the thinnest cables. These are both 12 gauge. This is probably 14 gauge. No, it's 13 gauge. <laughs> 13 gauge cables, huh? Just notice that. This thing is still hot. This thing is not really warm. This is kind of warm. This is the warmest, even though it's been sitting for a minute. So there you have it. Load test. They all passed in the sense that they didn't burst into flames. However, after five seconds, this one dropped its cells into damaging territory. These two were right on the edge, but they did pass. So the next test is going to be the capacity test. We're going to test them all to see how close they are to their actual rated capacity. And then we'll sum it up. Let's now do the capacity test. Let's start with the Z battery. Let's plug this thing in. I didn't have it plugged in before because it does that all the time. It's annoying, but whatever. So it's set to cut off at 12 volts or less, which is three volts per cell, which is as low as you want to go. We're going to discharge these at a 2C rate. That's a reasonable discharge for what these batteries are typically used for. So there you go. We're at 16.7, 16.6 volts, 16.7 is where it's living. So we are looking for three amps on the current draw. Let's do it. There's three amps. We're going to keep an eye on this thing and when it's done, I'll come back. I sat down to record and it literally just stopped. I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, it's doing really well. Well, let's see where it ended up. 1,540 milliamp hours. So it meets its rating. Absolutely it does. So real quick, I noticed this when I put the Z battery on the charger to charge it back up after the discharge test. Look at the voltage of cell number four. That's uh. That's pretty low. That cell is definitely the weak one. The others are kind of in the ballpark, but that one is uh, not so good. 
next up is the CNHL. Let's just roll right into it, I guess. If you want to pick up this load tester, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get it. It's actually pretty cool. There's our 3 amp draw, 2C rate, and I'll be back when it's done. Let's see where this one ended up. Let's turn the load off. 1,520 milliamp hours. Again, just over its rating. Given the experience with the Z battery, I am curious to see what the cell balance is like. Let's try it. Feel free, dude. Just, just keep going. Twelve point six volts. That's the recovery. Three point one. Three point one six. Three point three. Three point oh five. None of them are quite as bad as the cell in the Z. Let's uh, let's hit it with three amps. Let's watch the voltage plummet. Twelve point one. There it is. I mean, there's literally no more juice left. All right, let's go test the ovary. <laughs> Ovonic, I mean. Last and probably not least, the Ovonic. I'll be back when it's done. All right, I caught it this time. See how quickly it's dropping down? 12 volts, there it is. Interestingly enough, the Ovonic actually has the lowest capacity. Turn off the load. Now the battery is going to recover a bit, but it did not make its 1550. Weird. Completely unexpected to me. Let's see what the cell balance is. 2.99, 3.32, 3.06, 3.24. Yeah, this one's kind of all over the map. A bunch of stuff I didn't expect. Let's go to our conclusion. Before I offer up my final recommendations on these three batteries, I wanted to thank the viewers for suggesting this. More than one person suggested, since I have all this equipment from the electric turbo stuff, I should test some RC batteries. This was actually kind of fun. I apologize if it was a little long-winded in places and a little clunky. It's the first time I'm doing one of these. But if you'd like me to do more, put in the comments below which batteries you'd like me to test. Now, I can't safely do a heavy load test on batteries much over 4S because you end up drawing a plasma arc in the load tester. Ask me how I know. So which one of these three do I think represents the best value? Well, even though it came in last place in the heavy load test, I think the Z is probably the best bet. Individually, they run $16.65 each, but you have to buy a two-pack, so there's that. Uh, the Ovonic is the most expensive at $22.51, and the CNHL was $19.99. The only place where the Z actually did come in last place was the heavy load test. It exceeded the capacity of even these two, never mind its rating. And I think that's because that's something that's, that's a trade-off when it comes to lithium polymer cells. Basically, the higher the burst discharge, the lower the overall capacity. And I think we saw that proved here. But that doesn't mean that the Z batteries are the best batteries for whatever your application may be. Hopefully you found this data both useful and informative, and please give me a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and we're going to go do some more testing with the Hobby Wing setup. You're going to see the big, massive uh, 12S battery pack I built to test it with, and of course there's a lot more sledgehammer and electric turbo and track action. All kinds of stuff is coming up. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Well, clearly Simon is refusing to move, so this is how we're going to do... See, see, see what happens? This is how we're doing the conclusion. Okay, all right. Anyway, ow, hey, 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 stop it. I can't, I can't even put my hands down, you psychopath. Ow, ow. Yeah, okay. All right.